Would you like a mentor whose journey you could learn from? And even if you have one or more already, how about another? This is another episode in the special series of episodes we call My Remarkable Journey here on the Remarkable Leadership Podcast. Today, like in the others, I will talk with a senior leader, in this case a CEO, to learn about their path, their lessons, and their journey towards becoming the leader they are today. So welcome to this very special episode of the Remarkable Leadership Podcast. If you are listening to this podcast, you could have been with us live, uh, and so you could be on future live episodes with us on your favorite social channel. You can learn more about that, get connected so that you know when they take place by going to our Facebook or LinkedIn groups. Just go to remarkablepodcast.com slash Facebook or remarkablepodcast.com slash LinkedIn. Today's episode is brought to you by our Remarkable Master Classes. If you are looking for a powerful, practical way to learn valuable skills on your time and on your device, consider Remarkable Master Classes. Currently, there are 13 designed and delivered by me on a wide range of personal and professional development topics. Want to overcome resistance? Want to be more influential? Those are just two examples of these master classes. Buy for yourself or talk to us about licensing any or all of these for your team or organization. You can learn more by going to remarkablemasterclass.com. That probably didn't surprise you. Remarkablemasterclass.com. And uh, so um, Keith is right here. I did not have him leave. I told him I was going to have him leave. I didn't do it. So he's right here. Let me introduce him and we will dive in. Keith Smith is on a mission to help leaders, entrepreneurs, and investors live more empowered lives, cultivate innovation, overcome fear, and become more effective leaders. He strives to make a difference by sharing his energy, experience, and passion, imparting wisdom and thought leadership, and being in the present during times of need. Keith has over 25 years of experience as an executive leader, mentor, and motivator. He is the president and CEO of Vonco Products in Trevor, Wisconsin. He is my guest today, and I'm so glad that you're here, Keith. Welcome. Thanks for having me, Kevin. I have already failed because I told you I would send you off so you wouldn't have to sit there while I did all that part, and then I promptly didn't do it. As I told you, I'm not in my normal location, so I messed that up, but um, I'm glad that all of you are with us today, and I'm excited to share uh, some of Keith's journey with you. And so uh, let's just start here, Keith. Um, you've been a leader for 25 years. Um, what was your first leadership role? Like, how did you get started on this path in that regard? What was the first job you had as a leader? Yeah, my first uh, impactful leadership role, uh, and maybe more of a traditional title, uh, was a lead man at uh, 22 years old. Uh, I was uh, simply working at a, a printing company and trying to earn money for college uh, along the way, uh, working uh, a night shift, running printing presses for uh, packaging and uh, going to college during the day. And this opportunity came up that uh, I'm like, man, I would really love to see if I could. Uh, and I felt like I've had this opportunity to be a leader uh, and the title was actually lead man. And so uh, it's kind of uh, a department um, first step to supervision. And I didn't get it, actually. Uh, I had some pretty stiff uh, competition in, initially. And I, I remember even at 22, I would never give this advice or uh, but you feel like I'm never going to make it. Uh, you know, it's, uh, well, we have a very different view of the world when we're 22 than when we're. You better believe it. Right? You better believe it. And, you know, I, I was when, when this came up, I was very serious about the opportunity, but I don't know that I was extremely intentional about moving myself into leadership uh, roles. And what it actually transpired was the, the gentleman that was uh, promoted turned it down. And I was the second pick. And uh, I had so no you problem. you did get it. You just <laughs> I had no problem. It took a little while to get there. And that, that moment was pretty pivotal for me to say, you know, as, as down as I was when I didn't get it, um, is, it was extremely the opposite of a high, like this is something that uh, uh, I really get excited about. It uh, inspires me. It's, it's, uh, I, I want to do this. I, I believe there's opportunity to create a lot of value through leadership. And I really committed myself at that point in time uh, to, to create a pathway and be extremely intentional and deliberate for the rest of my career towards uh, 
uh, improving my leadership. What was a what was a lesson that you say you took from that first role once you got it as the second choice? Uh, like what what's a, what's a one of the early lessons you got from that role? Yeah, people don't follow titles; people follow uh, true leadership, and and I, I learned that a lot the hard way, um, being relatively inexperienced in these positions really no training it was all all kind of innate uh again i've been in lots of school leadership uh, sports leadership roles and so some of that stuff uh, can be na uh, somewhat natural um, but uh, i really do believe uh, leaders can be um, made over time and that's that's what i had to learn a bit of the hard way is uh, you know I, I walk into this role as I was just working alongside all my colleagues and step into that first role and and walk around and say, yeah, you, you need to respect me. I've got this title and that's just not how it works. Um, and, and I think sometimes you underestimate that. Uh, some folks can. I certainly did and um, had had to learn learn the hard way and really uh, had to reset uh, and apologize for a lot of mistakes I made uh, in that early position. Yeah, so I co-wrote a book called From Bud to Boss. So I've yeah, talked sure. a lot about that over yeah. the course of time. So um, you saw someone who just joined us has told us where they're from. So if you're with us, feel free to, to tell us that. Uh, so what's something, Keith, in your journey as a leader that you're most proud of? Yeah, it's really just a, a behavioral trait. Uh, it's just constant curiosity and learning. It's just I've never stopped. And uh, I love surrounding myself with people like that, that just, you know, I, 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 I get this uh, concept of looking sm like the smartest one in the room and it's, a, it's, it's fine, but I, I don't necessarily put that as a high, high priority. I look for someone that's extremely inquisitive, uh, wants to learn, and leans in. Um, I mean, you can never know exactly how somebody else is feeling or, or how, how they uh, you know, what motivates them. And so you have to be curi curious, uh, to, to find these things out, uh, and, and extract this. So it's, it's, it's really a behavioral trait that, uh, is what I'm most proud of that I've maintained as my creed, uh, from that time I was well, well before 22, just curious on how things work, curious on how people are motivated, uh, curious about what inspires them, curious about what, creates value for my customers. And so that you may have just answered my next question, but maybe not. Uh, so what would you say is your greatest strength as a leader? Uh, yeah, it, that, that's a good one. But I, I would say uh, really calm in the storm, balanced and grounded, never too high, uh, never too low. And so I think when, you know, just advice for other leaders, it's, it's tough to follow uh, a leader that seems to have their emotions uh, move uh, on a whim, and it's uh, one of one of the things that I, I've uh, really worked to balance myself uh, is is my energy so that I can remain uh, balanced in the good times and any of the challenges and struggles business and life inevitably throws your way. So. Uh uh, for those of you who are watching or listening in, in these special episodes, I always ask my guest if there's one question that they want me to ask or one thing that they want to talk about. And you just hinted at it. Yeah. Uh, so let's talk about that a little bit. Let's talk about energy. You're a big energy guy. Um, you think it's valuable. You know it's valuable. And and uh, what are some ideas that you've learned? What are some strategies that you use to help us manage our energy? I guess first, why is that so important? Yeah. From your yeah. perspective, and then how? What are what are what's your advice in that regard? Yeah, I, I, one of the sayings maybe that I live by is manage your energy, not your time. And I, I, there's so much out there for time management. Um, and and energy, your time is fixed, and so you can't really change that. Uh, energy is something that uh, you can control for yourself. You can't control other people's energy, but something that I can control and contribute to. And so when I pour into my own energy, uh, I feel like I overflow into everyone else, my customers, my community, my employees. Uh, so uh, I've seen a marked difference when I become intentional and, and deliberate about managing my own energy and, and 
the outcomes um, that that happen tend to be uh, positive and and what I'm looking for. But it, when they don't, I'm grounded uh, and uh, can kind of deal with uh, the, the the variables that uh, show up. So what's what's one of your big pieces of advice about how to do that? Like, I think most of us would agree, like, yeah, energy is important. I mean, I don't know that everyone would say it as, as eloquently as you just did, or, or maybe think about it in the way that you're describing. And, and yet, we all, we all would like to be better at it. So what's, mm-hmm. a, what's a piece of advice you have for helping us sort of add to or manage our energy? Yeah, it's to me, it's about prioritization. And, and it's a little bit uh, similar to, to time, but it, having a very specific way to prioritize uh, and, and I've had plenty of challenges myself. Uh, I had a fair amount of uh, wrong priorities. Uh, you know, I'd wake up in the morning and the first thing I would do as a business owner and, and CEO is is get right on uh, my emails and get right on responses and what happened last night, uh, uh, operations that are running. And so, uh, and then I, I'd come home and I'd check my emails right before I go to bed. And so, working basically nonstop. And so uh, what I found is that, you know, I, I knew what was going on a lot, uh, but I, I also felt drained and what, and you weren't, you weren't doing anything about it. You just right. knew it. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, exactly. And uh, just felt drained all the time. And uh, my relationships felt that uh, my health felt that. Uh, and so there's so many things kind of out of Whack. So I, I I would say the big the first big thing is to prioritize yourself, uh, and so that would be the, the the first thing. And that's that's uh, you know what do you enjoy? Uh, you know what are the things that fill your cup and make sure you find some time uh, for that. And then health. You know I, I before I even get into work, I've spent time uh, filling my cup with uh, motivational uh, um, podcasts and and. Uh, discussions as well as a, a really strong workout routine, a little time um, in, a, in, a, in the heat or cold, uh, whether it's a cold plunge or sauna, uh, something that uh, pours into me before I even get the day started. And then the, the amount of energy I have when I get into the office, I, instead of checking my emails right away, I work on my most important thing. And that, that's when I'm most energetic and and i'm in flow let's call it uh yep. an energetic flow of doing things that uh, i'm passionate about and i can make a big difference in and usually when i'm working on something that can make a big difference hopefully it's something for a customer or something for an employee right so that's pouring into others because i've got that energy so it all starts really let's call it with a, a pretty uh strict int- uh, intentional morning routine Perfect. Well, I, I, I'm right with you. And not everyone's routine has to be the same, but we've no. got to find out the one that works for us, the rhythm that works for us. And as you said, those most important things, including ourselves. So I, I love that. So um, another thing that you mentioned, I read it in your, I read it in your, your the intro um, that struck me that I think is worth us talking about for a second, which is about the, the value of being present. So, so, a two-part question again, what do you mean when you say being present and how can we be better at it? Yeah, great question. It it goes into a bit of the curiosity as well. I think being present uh, is important to quiet your mind uh, with distractions. So we live in a society that has lots of distractions. You know, a lot of folks will have their cell phones in their hands or cell phones, you know, while they're working right next to them. Uh, these these things, uh, I just heard a ding, for instance, right? There's lots of distractions uh, that uh, can pull you away from what what you're focused on. And uh, I think eliminating those distractions, when you have somebody sitting in uh, your office or somebody sitting there with an, an issue, uh, they don't want you to be distracted with uh, something else. Uh, they want you to, to me, one of the most important things in a relationship is that I feel felt, uh, that you ha- you have... Uh, you, you, you're appreciating, you're validating someone's feelings. And yep. that's very difficult to feel felt uh, by the other person if they're distracted with so many things. So being present- is Not just good. difficult, <laughs> darn near impossible. Yeah, yeah. I, I would not feel good if, uh, hey, I have an issue here or you know, I, I 
I've got a customer issue. I want to go talk to somebody and they, and someone's sitting on the cell phone texting uh, while we're talking about a customer issue. It just, right. it's, uh, it seems just disrespectful, but I certainly don't feel appreciated. I certainly don't feel like, feel validated uh, that uh, someone's listening to what my real issue is. No, I would agree. Um, so we got a question that came in from one of our listeners. And, and I think that you've talked about this. I didn't see when it came in exactly, but I'll ask it. See okay. if you want to add anything you've already said. How do you manipulate your energy to get what you want in your career and life? I think you mostly answered it, but maybe there's something else you want to add at this point. Yeah, great question. I I would say um, I like to use the word cultivate, uh, let's call it. And so it, it really is... Um, when you say what you want to get in your career or life, uh, that's a certain outcome you want. And uh, I certainly have lots of goals I want to achieve. And so I then become deliberate and intentional about writing out what I want to achieve. And I actually live on a daily chart. It's called the chart of intentional living. Am I actually doing the small steps to get to where I want to go? Now, the, I think the trick in managing energy, because so many people, uh, myself included, want to give up before you actually get to that outcome. So I think the trick for me anyway, and I, you know, it, it may not be for everybody, but is to detach actually from that outcome. Is that outcome, I want it, but I also, if it, if it doesn't happen exactly how, how I, the journey of getting there, I've learned a lot. I've, I've learned by the obstacles along that way to get to where I, and there will be, it may not be the exact outcome I defined, um, but I have now gained so much more experience and, and uh, education and learning in that process uh, that good uh, outcomes come, come out of it, even if it wasn't the exact intended one. I've already won, regardless of what happens at the end, right? So um, how would you define Keith how would you define your leadership philosophy um yeah I would I would say it's cultivating infectious energy so it starts with making sure I'm as rock solid as possible and as energetic as I am and, and again it's not like coming out of my seat type of energy type person but it's uh, making sure that I'm ready to navigate uh, whatever comes my way so I can pour in to others and uh, lead through infectious energy Perfect. I, I love that word infectious energy because first of all, it is infectious. Uh, whatever, whatever the energy is positive, uh, cynical, it's all, it, it's all um, infectious, but uh, we certainly know where you, where you sit on that, uh, on that spectrum in the, based on this conversation. So um, one we've more been question. There. Yeah, we've all been there. We, we've, when someone walks in the room, and they just exude it like they they own the room it's just like they haven't even said anything and then you have others where you that walk into the room and just change the mood to yeah. down right that they're yeah. just dragging their feet and not happy or upset uh that energy uh it it, it is infectious it, it changes the 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 view of an entire organization it, it, and that's true for everybody, but it's especially true for us as leaders, right? The, the position of leader, um, because people are paying more attention to us. We have an outsized impact, an outsized chance to be influential. So I really love that thought. Um, the only thing you knew for sure I was going to, I guess you knew I was going to ask you about energy because we talked about that. But the only other thing that you knew I was going to ask you is this. Um, so what's a book uh, that was especially meaningful to your career and why? Yeah, it's, it's relatively recent. There's been a lot, but uh, I would say The Obstacle is the Way by Ryan Holiday is one of my favorite. It's built on a lot of stoicism and back to that balanced and, and grounded um, and navigating, uh, you know, the inevitable storms and opportunities that, that come. Don't get too high. Don't get too low. It, it is what it is. Uh, amor fati. Love, you know, love your fate. Uh, a lot of principles like that uh, come out of that book and a lot of examples of great stoic leaders um, that uh, have led through challenging and, uh, and some, some good opportunities as well. So Keith, before we wrap up, where would you want to point people where if they want to learn more about you, get connected with you, where, where can people learn? more? Yeah, I'd love to connect and chat, obviously talk a lot about energy. So many different 
uh, life hacks uh, and uh, that uh, we can we can share. Uh, but uh, KeithSmith.io, uh, hit my website up and uh, drop a note there, and would love to chat with a few people uh, from from your your group and your your podcast here, Kevin. So it's KeithSmith.io, everyone. Just to make sure you get the IO. I'm guessing somebody else has .com. Yeah. Um, so KeithSmith.io. So before we finish, everyone, I'm going to ask you the question I ask you every episode, whether it's a regular episode or one of these special journey episodes. The question is, now what? What action are you going to take as a result of what you just heard? Maybe you're going to go get a copy of The Obstacles Away. Uh, maybe um, you're going to be more intentional about your morning routine. Maybe you, you already were thinking about one specific thing that you could do to help you manage your energy differently, or maybe you're going to turn off the ringer on your phone. Like, I don't know what it is, uh, but think about what you heard and not just think about it. Don't just say, well, that was good, but take some action. Because until you ask this question and then take the ans take the action based on your answer, this was less valuable than it could have been. Let's just say it that way. So uh, Keith, thank you so much for being here. It was such a pleasure to have you. Uh, it's great to meet you, Kevin, and great, great audience. So everybody, um, you know that we're here every week, sometimes a special episode like this, but every week, another episode, at least one with another expert, leadership expert, expert leader. And I hope that you will join us. And wherever you happen to be watching us from, you know what to do right? You know that you can go rate us or you can go uh, refer us to others. I hope that you'll do that. And uh, we'll see you again next week on another episode of the Remarkable Leadership Podcast. Thanks, everyone.